Hello everyone, Miss Allison here today, and today we are going to make clay whales for our Exploring My City Through Art. Look at these lovely examples, student examples of whales. We are going to be making three-dimensional sculptures of whales today. And again, we're talking about New Bedford's history. Um, and in this history, it's all about whales, the whaling industry. And we know that New Bedford was number one in the whaling industry back in the 18th century and 19th century in New Bedford. They hunted whales for oil and they used this oil for lamps at home and street lamps on the street. And remember, New Bedford was known as the city that lit the world because they didn't have electricity back then. So that's what they used, okay? Today, whaling is banned, so no whaling is done, but we can go um, on trips to actually see whales in their own habitat and we protect them now. But it's always good to know your history, right? So we're going to learn how to make some wonderful whales. And let's learn a little history about whales in terms of the two types of whales. And not the different names of whales, but two categories of whales. And um, they are one, the tooth whales, so whales that have teeth. And another group is whales that have baleen. And baleen would be like their teeth. They're not actual teeth, but... It, they almost seem like hairs. So when you when you look at it, you will see long strips coming all down together. And what that does is that when they eat the krill, which is mini shrimp, um, it, it acts like a sieve. It acts like a strainer, like a strainer at home. And the little shrimp get caught in their mouth and the excess water goes out. So the baleen is a separate type of whales that have baleen, how they eat, and then other whales have the teeth. So they're in different categories. Now the category um, in New Bedford that they went hunting, they will catch, they would go out to get many different types of whales. But the main one they really liked was the sperm whale because the oil in that whale was clear and it was the best oil for light, lighting lamps, etc. Okay, so you will see there many types. Now today, we can make, you can make any whale that you like. And remember, there are many different types. You know, you have the, the blue whales, you have the orcas. I know a lot of you would give me a long list. We have the killer whale, we have the humpback whale, right? We have the sperm whale, uh, dolphins, dolphins are whales, okay? So you can choose which one you like to do. But, and I will show you how we form the shape and all of that out of clay. Okay, so we will be working with Claire to get today. So be prepared to get your hands a little dirty. I hope you're not afraid of a little clay hands. We are working on clay, air dry clay. Usually we work with clay and then we fire it in the kiln. So a kiln is like a big oven where we put the um, our ceramics, the clay, in there to get fired and hard. Okay, but... Because we are working from home, we don't have a kiln to work with, so we're using air-dried clay, but we can use it in the same fashion. So I'm going to take you through the steps of molding an object, carving out things, and creating your, um, your lovely whales today. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, we are ready to begin. I have... A handout here that you'd probably get with different whales that you can choose from and the most important thing when we are sculpting something we want a drawing of it or an image in front of us that we can work with that you can actually see shapes and forms when you decide which one you want to do you really want to study what the shape is okay look and see because most things are made up of very simple shapes that then you can change or adapt, like a cylindrical shape. Look at that, almost like a cylinder, right? If you hold it this way. Um, areas that look almost like a, a, a triangular shape, the dorsal fin, triangular shape, right? Look at a different type of triangle there. So you want to reduce everything to a shape. Really try and understand the shape that you're using. So we have our image and we will choose whichever whale we want. 
also we have a few tools some plastic tools all right that are sharp enough to make shapes and outlines and designs etc onto the clay all right we have our clay everybody is going to have a bag of clay that they can use and this clay feels and looks like exactly the real clay that we use in the clay room okay that fires but this one the only difference is that it doesn't need to be fired it's air dried okay so you're gonna get a slab of clay but I'm gonna pull off the first thing I want you to do is to pull off a piece a small piece and you're gonna have a container any kind of container wide or plastic container right this is a lot you can do even less put it in there and then you're gonna I have some water in here I'm gonna add just a little bit of water now I'm sure you're asking why is Miss Allison doing this okay this is because we are making slip and slip is actually um, a little bit of clay added to water see how I'm cutting it up a little bit but it's not really gonna make the, the slip right away I want to leave it in a little bit of water so that's the first thing I want you to do so you can set it aside because the longer it stays in the water it dissolves a little bit and it thickens up and this is what we call slip s l i p and it is what we use as the glue you know so if you want to add something to a piece um, like if you're making a cup and you want to add the handles you will glue it on with this you don't just push it in <laughs> you know sometimes with clay you could just kind of press something in and then you think that it's stuck together but when it dries and then we have to fire it etc it can break off even with the air air dry um, clay they can easily break off when they harden if they're not attached properly so this is a very important point that you want to remember so you see this so let's just put it aside and let it do its work now I did mine right I let mine sit for a while and the longer you let it sit is the longer it creates this kind of paste a glue like paste seeing it there Whereas when you just put it, you're seeing the separation of the water and the clay. But let it sit. This has been sitting overnight, actually. But you don't have to wait overnight. So just do it really um, early before you start. And then, then you would have it ready to go. Or you can do it now. And then as we, because you're not really going to need it until we start adding on the dorsal fins, etc. Or anything else you want to add on. Okay? So there's my slip. Always remember that a slip is almost like the glue that will help you glue parts together. Got it? All right. So the next step is, so I have all this clay and I want to make a whale. Well, I choose whichever whale. I come up with the whale that I want. But, you know, sometimes it's very intimidating to get just like a big slab of clay and then we have to make something from it. Okay? So... I always like to, you know, you can make more than one. From this huge thing, you can make a huge whale or you can make more than one, smaller ones. I like to start with a small one first, just so that, you know, you get the hang of feeling the clay. You know, if any of you haven't done clay before, it's important to kind of feel the texture, roll it around. If you roll it like this, you can get like a ball. Okay. See? Here's an example of one that I made. This is what I made first, a small one. Because you want to really feel how and just get the hang of it. You always, for me, practice always makes perfect, right? And this is a larger one, larger whale. So I'm going to make a small one. You can even make it smaller than that if you want. So you pull it off and let's make a ball, a nice even ball. So I'm just taking it there, taking my palm and rolling 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 okay and I have that ready good now I am thinking of I am going to make one of the sperm whale so it's this one here but you can choose any of the others 
Look at the blue whale over here. The blue whale is the largest whale. And it's the largest mammal and largest animal in the world. It is huge. It can be over 100 feet long. Okay? Really, really humongous. Um, the sperm whale is large, but not as large as the blue whale. And the sperm whale we were talking about in New Bedford, uh, whaling culture and whaling industry, that they hunted the sperm whales. And the sperm whales were toothed whales. The blue whale is a baleen whale. And I talked about the two categories. All right. So I see the kind of shape I want with the sperm whale. You notice the head of the whale, the nose part is just, it's almost straight down. Okay. It's blunt. Whereas some of the other ones are pointed. So you want to think about it. You don't want to make up a shape. You want the shapes to look. So the first thing I do, no matter what my sh my 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 shape of my whale is, most of them look like um, an oval. So I want to roll, look at what I'm doing. I'm going to roll it, but I want the head to look larger. So I'm rolling it in my palm like this. Notice my palm is open and like this. So the part closer down to my palms are more pointed, okay? Or you could take your hand and just kind of mold. But I like to roll it because when I roll it, I can get it longer. Look at that. I can get it longer. But I'm still keeping the top larger than the bottom. Keep going. Now, what do you want to do? You do not want to overdo it. Take your time. Because anytime you make something too thin, like when you're doing this, you might really enjoy doing it. And then it's long, 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 and it's breaking apart. It's too long, okay? think that's good. So I have this basic shape here. It's kind of flat. The nose area of my sperm whale is like that. Okay. So I have this body. And guess what? I'm not going to make a tail and join it onto it. I'm just going to curve this up. It's a little tricky, but look. So you can have the tail up or you can have it flat. I like to turn it up a bit. Sometimes I have it flat. This one I have it flat down. You seeing this? Look at that. Okay, so we can make it flat. But now I'm gonna hold like where I want the tail to be and kind of make an indentation. So you wanna see what the shape is, use your fingers and start spreading it out, fanning it out. You notice that this part comes in so it's almost like you're pinching. So you're making little movements. So I pinch where I want the tail. Seeing that? Not too hard, but I pinch enough so it comes in. See that? Then I kind of flatten it out a bit. I'm being very gentle. So if you go too hard and too thin, it's going to be so thin it's going to break off. So you want it thinner, but you don't want it to the point where it's going to break off. Look at that. It almost looks like a heart shape, right? The tails look like a heart shape sometimes, right? So it goes in and it comes out. You see, I'm getting my basic shape already, already. I can have my tail flat like this. This one, I kind of curled it in, like if you see the tail curled, you see? Or I can push my tail up. What if I push my tail up? Then it becomes like one of these. See, where it's up, like it's flipping its tail up. This is what you see when you go, when you go whale hunting, not whale hunting, sorry, but when you go to see whale watching, that's what we do. We don't hunt whales anymore, but we watch whales, which is lovely. And sometimes you see the tail flip up above the water when it's curved like that, right? So you can have it up or you can have it flat down. Look at that. So that's why I start with a small one. This one's kind of medium. You could even just pinch a little bit, a tiny bit. So you do a tiny one. I suggest you start off really tiny. Look, I'm doing another one, really small, circle. And then, look at it. I put my two, um, my hands together right here by my palms, and I roll. Roll, 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 roll. 
I mean, I could do it like this, but then it'll be even. I want the head part to be larger, okay? Like a cone. I always try to find an, a shape that I could relate to. That's a basic shape of it. And I would say almost like a cone, like an ice cream cone. You start with that. Whichever, whichever way. You can do it like how I did there. You can put it down and roll, but you always remember the top must be larger. So you see it right there? And then I can bend this for my tail, and then I fan out my tail. So the tail is like a triangle, and then you squeeze it, squeeze it. It sometimes becomes like a heart. You make a little indentation in the middle. See? So have fun with this. Start small. You can start as small as this. I suggest you start small because I remember doing this for the first time, the wheels with a big piece of clay, and it's really kind of, you know, intimidating, and it's a lot, especially for, for little hands. So you want to start small, practice, and see what happens, okay? All right. So this one is dry. Look at this. So we've gone back here. We have our basic shape. If it's a little bumpy, you can smooth it with your fingers. Fingers smooth things really nicely. Okay. Smooth. You see this part here? You can smooth. But you're being very careful. I use my fingers. And you can use some of these tools as well. You just, you know, practice it and see which tool you like better. You don't have to use every tool. Not every tool you're going to like using or feel like it's, you know, effective. Right. Then you can use one of these, any one with a, um, a point to make any kind of indentation, right? So you can make like an indentation of an eye. Then you can make like a mouse. So I am doing a sperm whale, kind of a, a flat head. And I'm going to do the mouth all the way. So you could just carve the mouth or you can go deeper in. Notice some came off here. If you go deeper, then you can actually raise open open the mouth a bit. <laughs> you seeing that? It doesn't have to be. You could just carve it so you see the line or you can open it. Right? Also, whales have a blowhole. They're mammals. So we're mammals, so we breathe air. They're mammals too. And they breathe air. And so you need a blowhole at the top of the head. I learned that the um, the sperm whale has a blow hole more to the left front side of the head, not right in the middle, but the left, right? Not to be confused with the eye that I just did. Okay, and then you can do other designs, anything else that you wanna carve in, or maybe if you wanted to put lines on the tail, etc. You know, you can think about it, whatever you want. All right. Now, for when we use the slip, we use the slip because we want to add things, okay? If we want to add anything, we anything added on, we will use this kind of glue. So you want fins, the fin at the side, you want to add it on. You don't just make the fin and squeeze it on. You have to do something. So I just took another piece and I flattened it out. So I'm flattening it. I'm making it thin, but not too much. And then I roll it back. So I have something like this. And then I'm going to carve out my fin. Look again at your drawing. And look, whichever fin, look at these. These are all fins. These are dorsal fins. Okay, look at the shape. Look at the shape and decide what you want. So I'm doing the sperm whales. I want these little, they look like leaves actually, right? And they go right there. So I'm going to use one of my tools and I'm going to make that, that shape. 
It's small. I'm going to carve it right through to the table for you to see right through. Look at that. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay. Now, when we're using, I, I like to say the real clay, the clay in the studio where we actually fire. We do something called scoring and we're going to do the same thing here so that we make sure that it stays on a little fin fell, but it's on the table. I want to put my fin right here, wherever you want to glue something on, you want to make a bit of scoring. This is called scoring. Like you're doing like hatch lines, lines down and lines across. So it, it, it's, it looks very textured. Right? You're going to make a textured kind of space. Good. Put that down. This is very important to follow. Very important. Now my fin is tiny. And I do the same kind of textures on the other side. This is especially, it's not as important now because we're doing air dry, but I'm, I want to show you the real technique. So if you ever do ones that where you will be putting it into a kiln, you will know exactly what to do and you won't forget. So you score on to the wheel, the body of the wheel, and you score onto the, um, yeah, onto the fin. And then... We take our glue. Look at how it looks. So you want some, and you know, the liquid part, the soft part, and you just put it over. Ooh. And you see, I just put it on like that using one of the tools. And then I take some more of my slip and I put it right on where the textured part was. I turn it over and I attach my fin. Okay, so just kind of squeeze it in, not too hard. You can take um, a tool to just smooth it out a little bit at the, just at the seam so that you don't see a line. Sometimes you see a line where you attach it. You don't want to see a line. Okay, and then nothing like your fingers to smooth. Were you seeing that? You seeing that? So it comes off the surface. All right. So you do the same on the other side with the fin. If you want to do the dorsal fin, which is at the top here, you make a larger one and you glue it on. Now with the sperm whale, they, they have a dorsal fin, but it looks kind of like a hump. But I am going to put a, one of these larger dorsal fins on just to show you how to attach a larger shape because some of your whales might have the larger um, shapes, okay? Or even after this, you can do different things like you can do a shark with a large one, etc. All right, so I have some of this left over. I would start off with a, like a ball, smooth it out, you know, always feel the clay, move it around, right? Warm up the clay. Okay, and then I'm going to flatten it out a bit to a thickness that you want. Not too thin, not too thin. And I'm going to cut a triangle. So I'm trying to make one of these, right? It's a triangle that's leaning, kind of leaning to the right. And I carve right into it so I can like draw it out first like you know lightly you see how lightly and then I would go in this one is sharper and I cut it right through go right through the table right through until you meet the table And this might be a little tricky because they're smaller items. But if you're doing something, so you see my, it's a triangle, but I can just lean it this way. You can mold it and lean it. It's going to attach on this part. So I like to 
tap, tap, tap on the table. So I have a flat area. When I have a flat area, it's easier to attach and to glue. And remember, we're going to put our scoring lines, little lines that go across. Ding, ding, ding. Just to make it textured. Always remember to do that. And then we're going to place it somewhere around here. And we're going to texture it again. Ding, 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 ding. See? Good. What, what do we do next? We take our glue, which is our slip. Place it there. Now, in anything that you make with clay, this is how you attach other parts. So you might want to make a cup. You attach the handle. Now, do you see how I attach this? So I pushed it in like that. And I take my finger and I kind of smooth the sides so that you don't see a line. It doesn't look like you attached it. Sometimes if you attach them, you see a line. But if you just smooth it with the slip it makes wonders and then I just kind of shape it to what I want I want I want that fin that dorsal fin to curve backward you see how it's curved look at this Ta -da! isn't that great he is so cute good so that is your that's your shape that is your whale and I would love to see what you decide to do. So this is a sperm whale. So the front is different, right? Um, and you can decide to have your tail up or your tail down. Now I'm going to take some, you can take some slip. Don't be afraid of getting your hands dirty. So you see how the slip is? It's just, it's a nice, smooth kind of thing. So you let it sit in the water and really it becomes the, the glue. And sometimes I just use it to smooth out areas. If you think, because when you're making it, it becomes very textured, you just smooth it out. Of course, please don't do anything too much where it changes the shape. All right. And then anything else you want to add in, you know, if you wanted to do a little more textures, on the lines or etc. on the top, you can. Okay, here we go. Now, a very, very important point, and that is, if you're not finished, let's say you don't have enough time to finish, you still wanna work on this clay. Let's say you haven't done the dorsal fins, or you wanna add other things, right? But you wanna come back to it tomorrow. If you will just leave it out in the air like this, it dries hard and it'll be a little hard to add to stick anything on it. You can still kind of carve with something sharp, but if you still want to mold it and do stuff, you want to cover it in plastic. So just get any kind of plastic, cover it fully, but um, sprinkle a little water on it and then cover it. And so when you come back to it, it will still be soft. You can put it in a baggie, like I had my clay in a bag, okay? You put it in, you sprinkle a little water. I have some water here. Sprinkle it and you close the bag. Okay, you zip it. If you have one of those Ziploc bags, I'm not going to do that yet. So I'm going to take mine back out. But please remember that if you're not finishing it now, you need to wrap it up. Also, if you have extra clay, like I have this big piece of clay left, I want to put wrap it in. Um, plastic with a little water or in my bag. I have the bag the wrong way. Okay, so I put it back in my Ziploc bag and I zip it. I sprinkle a little water on it and I zip it. It keeps it nice and fresh, okay? Oh, my zip is not working, so I'll find another bag for that. But anyway, you get the idea, you put it in your Ziploc bag. If your zip is not working like me, you would just tape it, okay? And you have it there. But please remember, do not leave your clay out. It will dry fully. You only leave your clay way out, clay whale out when you're finished, okay? When you are actually finished and you want it to dry hard. See, ta-da, good. This is an example of one that I did. 
This has been out a couple days now, so it is very hot. It is very, very hot. Now remember, it's just air drying. When it's fully dried like this, this is when you can paint it. And you can paint it anywhere you want. You can look, look up on the internet colored pictures of whichever whale you're doing to see the colors if you want to make it realistic. Or in my class, some of my students did theirs realistic and some didn't. <laughs> look at this dolphin. Yellow with polka dots. Look at that. Look at this sperm whale. Look at that. Stripes. Red, blue, white, teal, purple on the tail. This one is teal. Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at this eye. Woo! This is a sperm whale. Let me see some teeth in there. Okay. So you decide how you want to paint it. And you can paint it with um, acrylic paint. You can paint it with some poster paint, anything like that, because it's not going into the, the kiln. So you let it dry, and then you paint it in, and then you, um, and then you have it. You have your clay. Now, one more thing I want to show also, because I want to tell you, if you have the real clay. Now, if you were to turn these over, we actually dug out some of the clay underneath. You do not need to do this, but when these went into the kiln, into the big oven to heat and fire, so you need to do that so it's not too thick and heavy because sometimes it explodes in the kiln. I'm just telling you that so you know when you're using ones that go into a kiln. These are air dried, so you don't need to. So I didn't. So it's actually a little heavier, all right? You can take out some if you don't want it as heavy, but you don't have to. Remember, when it's dry now, you can't do it. You have to do it when it's still soft. Okay? Great. So there you have it. And then we can paint and enjoy our lovely whales. So I hope you understood all the steps, the important ones. Um, let me just go through that again. The important thing of slip. And whenever you have a shape, you are making scores on it, like lines on the shape and on the body of what you're doing, the main. And then you're going to add your slip to it and glue it down. Okay, so that's just an important thing that you want to remember when attaching different objects. Okay, great. So get working and start sculpting those beautiful clay wheels. So there you have it, your clay whales. How fun is that? Now remember, start small. Start with a little mini one first, just to feel how the clay works, you know, how it feels. If you've never done this before, please just take your time. Don't worry if, you know, it's not coming out the way you feel it should. My first one didn't, and I did more and more. So if you do them small, you can have different ones. You can then, after you do your whale, do other animals or shapes or anything you want to do. But remember the rules that I told you. Think about the shape of it. What does the shape look like? You know, so even if you think you can't draw it, you can sculpt it because you're thinking about, you know, the shape of something. So look at all these lovely ones. This was a plain brown one. This is actually with brown clay. We're using white clay so it dries lighter. And then you can paint. You can paint on the brown ones as well. So you see this one here? Good. Look at the, the fin and the details, etc. These, as I said, you can paint them after if you want. And you can make them realistic to what they look like, the type of whale that you're doing. Or you can make it non-realistic with all sorts of lovely big colors. You can turn the, the tails up or it could be down or to the side. Oh, it is so many things you can do with this. I am sure you're going to have tons of fun. So it was lovely being with you here today for Exploring My City Through Art and I will see you next time. Bye!